Uh, the next presenter will be Barbara Hill, representing Clean Power Now. Thank you, Chairman Jones. Uh, my name is Barbara Hill. I represent Clean Power Now, a nonprofit grassroots organization based here in Hyannis, Massachusetts. We have over 8,000 members. We um, support viable renewable energy projects and policies, and as such, we support the Cape Wind Project. It is a foregone conclusion that the Cape Cod Commission will refuse to grant Cape Wind's permit for an underwater cable today. It is clear that the Commission is poised to claim it is somehow lacking enough information. What is also clear is that the Commission has made a mockery of the important role it is intended to play in protecting all of the people of Cape Cod. More than 8,000 pages of federal and state permitting related reports have been released, yet the Cape Cod Commission subcommittee recommendation claims it does not have enough data to make an informed decision. In taking this regrettable step, the Commission is providing the people of the Cape all the evidence they need to know that the Commission has been captured by a few special interests with enough money to buy just about anything they want, including the government agency intended to protect us all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we received from Plead Power now a summary uh, that the Vice President Charles Keecamp was made. It will become a part of the uh, record. Next, we will hear from Mr. Cliff Carroll, representing Windstop. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and board members. My name is Cliff Carroll. I am one of the founders of Windstop a grassroots organization which consists of thousands of Cape Codders who value and wish to protect Nantucket Sound, our beaches and way of life from the industrialization by a private developer for profit with no direct gain or benefit to the citizens of Cape Cod. For the past two months I have given testimony and backup documentation to the subcommittee showing the environmental disaster that a 40,000 gallon oil spill from the 10-story transformer, which would be located just off our beaches, would present to our tourism and our Cape and Islands economic zones. As a result of that, the subcommittee requested that a Cape Cod shoreline oil spill plan, or oil spill response plan, be provided for their review. Cape Wind has refused to, re has refused to provide that plan to the commission. In fact, we learned during these hearings that our local fire and police departments responsible for such a disaster have never even been contacted during the entire six-year period the Cape Wind has been in existence. For Cape Wind to try to prevent the Cape Cod Commission from considering this 24 square mile industrial park as a project of development regional impact is absurd. The size of the Manhattan, New York, this would be one of the largest construction projects in the world. The insults and public comments, as we just heard, made by the Cape Wind and its supporters is further evidence of the complete disregard which this developer and his partners have for the heritage, traditions, and the processes that have been put in place to protect this treasure that we all know as Cape Cod and the islands. Nantucket Sound, our beaches, our fishing grounds, and the heart and soul, the economic engine of our Cape and Islands, should not be allowed to be hijacked by an off-Cape developer to the EFSB, which is an off-Cape board, which is politically controlled, union-based, who has absolutely no interest in the welfare of the Cape and Islands and our safety, the heritage, or the people of Cape Cod. I would like to thank the Commission for the diligent effort it has exhibited with this very uncooperative developer. On behalf of myself and the thousands of members of Windstop, I respectfully request that the Commission fully support the recommendations of your subcommittee and deny this project. I would also respectfully request that the members of the Commission remember the arrogant and insulting manner 
in which you, the Commission, have been treated during this process when this project is once again before you, and I have faith they will be back in this room again whether they want to or not. A 40,000 gallon oil transformer oil spill is just one of the many issues that make this project the Cape and Islands worst nightmare. Please remember, Nantucket Sound, our beaches, and our Cape Cod way of life are not renewable. Once again, I want to thank you for your diligent efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Well, the next side up speaker was Glenn Watley, also on behalf of the Alliance to Protect Nantucket Sound. I believe Mr. Th Butler has taken the entire period of time. Uh, oh, okay. Are you, are you is there I any? I was just going to, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, just wanted to, I'm Glenn Watley, CEO of the Alliance to Protect Nantucket Sound. Just have a couple quick rebuttal comments, especially. Please, very quickly, because I don't want to open this sure. up to uh, other people saying we gave you an unfair advantage. Exactly. I, I, I think uh, wanted to thank the subcommittee for their diligent work as well as the staff. And with regard to the impression about uh, the membership of Clean Power Now, I just want to put in the record that the Alliance to Protect Nantucket Sound has over 30,000 uh, members uh, supporting our effort to protect the sound and that this is not just a small organization as has been implied and that we have uh, supported the whole issue of uh, renewable energy at the right place at the right time. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Watley. Well, but whether or not to grant a procedural denial only. Thank you. A discussion by the commission members. Bill. Uh, I take, uh, I must take this opportunity, Mr. Chairman, to take great exception to the remarks by Barbara Hill of Clean Power Now when she makes the implication that any of this commission, especially including myself since I stand for public office and would be, would be soliciting funds to support that, that I have received or any member of this commission has received any money or any, or any financial gain or anything of substance that would change our opinion about what we're doing here. I think that, I think that, that kind of accusation is absolutely out of place and I will not tolerate it. Now, having said that, I think that, I think that uh, what is before us is something that we have the opportunity to stand up for the 240,000 people that live here. We are the people that represent their interest, and it's our opportunity to speak to that interest. I don't believe that anything that I read in the uh, recommendation of the subcommittee prevented the uh, uh, Cape Wind from coming back and giving us the information that, will help, that would help us make a reasonable and, and, uh, and what I would call a useful decision with regard to the benefits of the project. Uh, and, I, and I think that we are, that not giving, been given the opportunity to do that places us under the authority of, of someone or an agency that has no stake in the outcome of what happens here. Once that change is made, and we hear it before local zoning boards all the time, once, once the project is allowed, the project has a life of its own, and you just deal with the outcome. So you have to be very careful as you proceed. Not being given that opportunity to proceed reminds me what I tell fifth graders when we go over American history, that the basic reason for the American Revolution was not having representation. 